in nearly 13 billion years, but light from the farthest observed star has officially reached Earth. The extremely distant star was observed by the, by the Hubble telescope recently, making it the most distant star we've ever seen in the universe. Wow, this is pretty exciting. Yeah. The light from that star is so old that it's like looking back in time. Scientists say that light form when the universe was about 7% of its current age. Joining us live to talk about this discovery is obviously Director of Space Science Education, Jim Todd. Thank you so much for joining us, Jim. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's put, yeah, it's, uh, uh, definitely uh, I'll, I'll just throw it out. Yeah, what do we know about this star? <laughs> you know, the, the size, type, uh, whatever you can tell us about it. Well, it, uh, the picture worth a, a billion words, really. Um, so it, it's got the amazing picture taken from uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. And what it's really telling us the story was how the stars were developed nearly 12.9 billion years ago. And so that's how long light took, it, took to, to reach Earth. So you see in this image, Erido, with its star right there, is being magnified by the, what's called gravitational lensing. And then on the side, you see the, the clusters, and they're embedded inside of a cluster of a, a galaxy. And then to the upper left, What's magnifying that is the gravitational lensing. It's a cluster galaxy between Earth and us. And so it's a pretty remarkable picture that we're looking at. We're looking back in time. We're seeing the early development of the star, which only a few percent, uh, very early stages of, of the life. And so uh, this is a pretty amazing discovery uh, by the Hubble. It's like hard to wrap your head around, honestly, you know, looking back in time, back to when the universe was younger to, to see the star. I mean, what does this mean for, for research going forward, this discovery? I mean, what, what doors does it open? Well, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, you look at the star and you say, okay, what, what, what did it take the first star to develop? And that's what astronomers are looking at back in time and looking really for the ideal um, image of the object. And keep in mind that this area that the uh, Hubble is looking at, is very, very small, just a few pixels wide. And so they were scanning the sky and they found this as a candidate uh, to be able to understand uh, the formation of the star and then the warping, but also get a better understanding how light travels and get bent by the gravitational lensing and uh, that lensing meaning that it's affected by a massive gravity so it curves and turns so there's so much can be learned from uh, doing this and then in time uh that's already on the calendar for june james webb telescope going to confirm this and look at it even closer see the temperature and the makeup of the star the binary star system and so on now, do we know, Jim, uh, anything about what's around this particular star, or do we have any clues about that? Well, that, that, that is a big question. Um, in that picture, we see Erido, right? and then we see on the side uh, the cluster, star cluster. And so that's as much as Hubble can see, which is pretty remarkable in itself, and the distance. So. It's, it's just the beginning of the discovery uh, that we're looking at. And so what we're hoping to find, whether or not Eridol is a binary star, uh, there are other uh, red giant stars nearby. So James Webb is really hopefully going to answer those questions. This is only the beginning. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, Jim, the, the James Webb Space Telescope. It launched into space at the end of last year. Is it, uh, is it fully up and running yet, or are we looking at you know, potentially more discoveries like this once it's able to see further into space? Absolutely. Uh, there's more discoveries, and, and uh, that's what uh, James Webb is designed to do, is to enhance the, the discovery by Hubble. Hubble's been up there for a long time, and it's done a remarkable job. But we're pushing Hubble to the limit at this point, and it, this particular area, the magnitude of 27, with the James Webb Telescope going to see even further back, even down to the magnitude of 25, and further distance back in time. So I think we're going to be in for a pleasant surprise where they're going to discover not only this, but the entire universe, James Webb is going to really rewrite the textbook in the future. 
Boy, this is so fascinating. Uh, thank you so much, Jim Todd. I'm the Director of Space Science Education. My pleasure. Thank you. And of course, we'll post this interview along with everything we discussed in the AM Extra section on coin.com.